Hi! If you haven't seen my two previous videos on unlicensed lewd NES or Famicom games, then do check them out. You don't need to, you might just want to have some context before I start absolutely whamming 8-bit breasts on your screen. Yes, here we are, out of all the so-called adult games released for the Famicom, and there were a lot, I have found the most absolutely awful one. The one that requires so much desperation to see a drawing of a naked woman that even the biggest incel you have ever known would go, nah, I'm alright, uh, thanks. Alright, now let's take a look at Pyramid. It's all been leading up to this. This game. This game is such complete and utter, intensive, distilled, all packed up, ready for shipping bullshit. Seriously, this game. Fuck this game. Now, the original version of this game didn't have any nudity in it. The kid-friendly version was released outside of Asia and developed by Thin Chen. Now, just for clarity, the original non-adult version of Pyramid was released in the USA by American Video Entertainment in 1992, but it was first released in Taiwan by Sachin themselves in 1990. Plus, Australia got it thanks to home entertainment suppliers. In Japan, it appears to have only been released once by Hacker International, and they being Hacker International added some nudity. In the American release of Pyramid, the instructions say that you're playing as some lad called Dr. Otto Spettelbonke, who has found the tomb of Queen Leridity, also known as the Queen of Fun. The archaeologist laments that he's been trying to prove that Tutankhamun was the first to make rock and roll music, and instead, he's found proof that the ancient Egyptians were the first to play games. Now let's just gloss over the idea of Tutankhamun writing rock and roll music, because that's a really weird thing to add and I don't know what's going on. But how is it a discovery that they played games back then? There's loads of evidence that ancient Egyptians played and enjoyed games, and I'm telling you right now, there is not a chance any of them played this crap. And if they did, they wouldn't call themselves the Queen of Fun unless they were doing so ironically. The differences between this one and this one are very, very minimal. But it was Hacker International that spiced things up a little bit by adding some nudity. There is rumours on the internet that it features Queen Cleopatra entirely in the nude. Now, I did try to confirm that for you by playing this unutterable pile of crap to get to the rewards screen. But after more than two hours, I can confirm that I would rather feed my fingers to a scarab beetle than play just one more second of this tripe puzzle game. So this is like Tetris. If Tetris used triangles and was cooked up in the depths of hell by the most annoying and antagonising people who ever lived. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the developer of this Tutankhamun tits up isn't hanging out on the seventh level of hell right now, enjoying a martini in the warm glow of brimstone. The developer and Satan are probably best sodding mates. I've been thinking of committing cardinal sin just so I can go down there and punch the frigger in the face. You need to keep clearing lines by completing them, exactly like in Tetris, which is all well and good, but the pieces are all triangles or shapes comprised of triangles. And I don't care if it looks easy to you, it's actually far more difficult than it looks, because it manages to be a perverse mixture of boring and challenging. Let your concentration slip because you're so bored your arse is about to fall off, and that's when you mess up, and there is no coming back from it. It would be easy enough to describe this game as an attempt to copy Tetris. But it's not an attempt, really, because that would require effort. Just change all the pieces in Tetris to triangles. There we go, cheers. When do I get paid? Look at this. This piece is the worst. It only fits in very specific locations, and nine times out of ten, it absolutely messes up your flow. The game doesn't mind slamming you with a bunch of them in a row, and unlike all the other pieces, it's not possible to fit a bunch of them together. This piece needs to get wrecked absolute, utter, literal peace. Imagine if the pyramids were built with pieces like this, it would look like a giant cheese grater. Holes galore. This is not an adequate way to build one of the wonders of the world, you guys. Cut it out. It also unreasonably annoys me that the play screen isn't in the exact centre. It's just slightly over to the left. 
but it's noticeable and I hate it. And now you can't unsee it either. You're welcome. Need to test if you have OCD? Just gauge how itchy the fact that this isn't in the dead centre makes you. After I noticed this, I suddenly started seeing other things that weren't in the dead centre. Stuff on my desk, stuff hung up on my walls, my sexuality. Hello, yes, Doctor, I've discovered I've got OCD from playing Pyramid on the Famicom and NES. Oh, aren't you the one who came in here saying they found out they got epilepsy from Colour a Dinosaur? Yes, I am, and I'm reusing this joke. Thank you very much. Give me all the drugs. Bye. The version without the naked pictures isn't really anything more than just a time killer, and you'll probably end up rage quitting it anyway within the first 10 minutes. But this version demands that you keep on playing if you want to see a bit of that 8-bit tit. And to do that, you need to clear 20 lines. 20 sodding lines. I can seriously barely clear one. At no point while I was capturing footage from this game was I ever able to clear more than about five lines. It really is that bad. So apparently, depending on the speed that you set the game at, you'll get to see Cleopatra at a different stage of undress every time you hit 20 lines. But this really takes the piss. You can see her cleavage anyway without all of the effort if you just go onto the picture test screen. Great, ta, yeah, thanks for that. Why was I pissing about trying to get all of these lines again? I mean, you do have to input a code on the title screen to get to it, but you're honestly more likely to work out the code than to get to see her during the gameplay. Up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right, and there she is. The utter cow. The full title of this version is Pyramid Cleopatra Kiki Ipatsu, which is how you know that's good old Cleo serving looks here. Oh, I cannot wait for you to get bitten by an asp. In fact, I'll bring it over for you. You just sit yourself down there, love, relax. Just make sure that you leave enough poison in it so I can at least be put into a coma and never have to play this shit ever again. Look at her, holding a piece of pyramid. What, what are you doing with that, love? Oh, don't worry, my girl. You do not need to be putting that chunk of pyramid anywhere. You cannot possibly cause me more agony than you already have. Although if you could ram it into my eye sockets, I'd really appreciate that at this stage. Because the shapes are what they are, it's not really possible to clear more than two lines at a time. Although 90% of the time, you can really only do one. And that means you're going to be playing it for ages, even if you manage to not mess up at any point. Also, unlike Tetris, there isn't much randomization going on. Very often, you'll get a really bad piece that just keeps coming. Three, four, or even five in a row, and you're there frantically trying to find a place for them that doesn't mess up what you were hoping to be a line. Now look here, it says bomb. Obviously, since all versions of this game are so rare, at first I couldn't find any scans of the instructions to work out how to make it rain fire on this play screen. Pressing select does nothing, B just rotates the piece back around. Eventually, I worked out that you need to press B and up at the same time to get a bomb. How the hell? What kind of bullshit is that? What was wrong with the select button? I have to mess around like an utter tool just to release the bomb. There's an image of the box art here uploaded to the Digipress forum in 2005 by user Learange, and check it out. You can actually see three of the reward screens on the back. Wow. Way to ruin the surprise. If you're playing it for the softcore porn, and as with all of these games, it's so softcore it may as well be ice cream wrapped in a condom, you may as well just take the box art to the bathroom with you instead. In fact, the front cover is far more sexy. Look at this, it's like a meatloaf album. There's a hot woman on the bottom there, massive sphinx, thunder and lightning. This looks amazing. The game and the box are super rare now, but if anything, having the box and that fantastic cover art would make the actual game even more disappointing, if that were possible. Now, when I was first writing this review, I didn't realise that you can actually see all of the reward pictures if you just press select here. But here we are, all the photos of Cleo getting her kit off. And while they are nicely drawn by an actual hentai artist, I believe, there is nothing on this earth that is worth going through the stress of lining up these pieces 20 times. Think about it. To get all of the pictures, there's 10 altogether if you don't use the cheat code, you need to clear 200 lines one after the other. You can play this for hours and still only manage to get to see the first two pictures. I was actually having more fun playing around with this test screen than the actual game. Let's make her nipples bright turquoise. 
That is terrifying. I kind of like it. Clearly, the ancient Egyptians had access to cosmetic surgery since Cleo has obviously had these bad boys done for them to not be sagging at that size. Plus, those 160 degree nipples have medical litigation written all over them. Yeah, we'll take your case to court, Cleopatra. Just sign on the papyrus at the bottom of every page of this massive legal document. Please calm your literal tits, they are going mental. At the oh no, she's got jogger's nipple. Let me sort that out for you, love. There you go. Now they're just horrendously infected. What the hell happened here? Look at her legs. Where has her waist gone? She is literally just a pair of breasts and a vagina. I mean, physically, not as a metaphor of how people who made this game view women. Oh, ho, ho, radioactive. Mark Antony's penis is going to fall right off after a couple of days to months, depending on the duration of the exposure. Oh, you're looking to sue too, Mark Antony. Please sign on the papyrus. God, being a lawyer in ancient Egypt must have been so lucrative. Now, just because I never want to have to talk about this game again, I have to mention middle school English. This is a game that asks you to translate some Chinese characters into English phrases. If you do well enough, you will get rewarded, rewarded, with a game of Pyramid. You sick, sick bastards. Sachen were using Pyramid as a reward for children after learning some English? What the hell? If anything, this is going to give those poor kids PTSD every time they hear English words. They're going to feel like us Brits every time we see a Go Compare advert. Middle school English is dated at 1989, whereas the original Pyramid is dated 1990, so this could be the first use of it. Now, obviously, since I can't read what I assume is Mandarin Chinese, I have no idea what's going on here. But I have to admit, I was enjoying watching this penguin absolutely body the letters on this keyboard. Ha! We need more games with body slamming penguins. If you put the Konami code in on the title screen, you can get to the pyramid game without having to learn any English at all. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA start. I can't believe this crap got put onto an NES cart. Is learning English really so much of a chore for Chinese kids that a game like this is considered to be more fun? I believe a Korean version was also released in South Korea in 1991. I genuinely feel sorry for the kids playing this. I hate that this was their reward. You'd be so pissed off you'd probably hit puberty at seven. And then you'd hit your parents with a club. Let me just, let, let me just put this in here. Let me just um, fantasize about killing my entire family. Can you believe that the absolute sadists at Thin Chen slash Sachen went ahead and made a sequel to this? Pyramid 2 was released around 1990, apparently only in Asia. It's hard to pinpoint exactly because even the Asian version is incredibly rare. I've heard it's much better than the first one, but then I've also heard that getting a Game Boy shoved up your nostril is less painful than giving birth to a Mega Drive. Doesn't mean I'm gonna try it though, does it? Alright, well I thought I'd better be fair and play Pyramid 2 just to see what the story is. Doesn't seem that Hacker got a hold of this one because there aren't any versions with nudity. It is sad in a different way though. It seems that it will only let you play with a two player screen. No idea if this is a ROM issue because I can't get hold of the physical copy to tell you. Because even if I had that kind of cash, I'd sooner use it to get hold of Cleo's plastic surgeon and get my breasts sewn onto my back. Having that second player screen at all times really drives home the fact that you have no friends. But yeah, okay, fine, this one is better. It's got cool stuff in it that's kind of weird but cute, like this level where you have to shoot at a bat to get pieces. Or this lad. Hey, hey buddy, hey. It's a shame the actual game itself with the stupid triangle pieces is still an absolute joke. So even though it all looks much nicer, it's still nearly impossible to play. Get in the bin. Let's finish up by filling out the feedback form in the back of the American release instructions. Playability, one. Action, no, one. Graphics, one. Overall rating, get to absolute fu- Right, now if you don't mind, I'm off to deal with my anger in a responsible way. Ha 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 ha!